Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, so the, the, the sad answer, the first part of your question is alcohol and drugs. And we mentioned Anthony Lloyd, um, the heroin addict, but there's a lot of substance abuse in the journalistic community uh, by war correspondents, alcohol particularly. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting. So, so the, the, the way that soldiers deal with stress is typically while they're still serving, it's in their unit. And, and, and most, if you talk to, to, to most soldiers or Marines when they've gone through a traumatic incident, um, and particularly guys who've, who've done something you know, brave that may get a medal, they'll almost always say, I did it for my buddies, um, not for myself, or not because I'm a hero. Journalists don't really have that, because journalists are out to get the scoop. They don't share. So if you have a platoon, you want every man to come home alive. Basically, that's, you know, when the bullets start flying, that's really what you really want. You want to achieve your objective and get home alive. And, and you've got your, it's kind of your, your surrogate family. Journalists, on the contrary, they want to get home with a scoop. They, of course, journalists don't want to see anyone killed, but, but they're not sharing. You know, it's, it's a very solitary type of, of, of job. And so the way of dealing with stress becomes self-medicating, and it's very often alcohol, and, and, and in some cases, it's... it's um, pharmaceuticals uh, or, or narcotics. Um, the bigger issue of PTSD, uh, it's huge. Um, the military culture has been slow to embrace it uh, for reasons that are understandable. You know, if you're asking people to do abnormal things, and frankly, to run into gunfire is a pretty abnormal thing to do, you don't want to start creating all these outs for these soldiers say, well, that's, that's too dangerous, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, I understand why the military is slow to come to terms with That said, um, because of the, the enormous trauma that has been generated by Iraq and Afghanistan, and some of the senior generals, Pete Corelli in particular, four stars, uh, Ray Odierno, have, have come out and, and, and really started to say, you guys, we need to get you help. And, and that's slowly percolating down the ranks. Uh, one of the uh, uh, problems that I've noticed, and I, I have some friends who are amputees, there's a very uh, easy, slippery slope. People who, who, who have had traumatic injuries and lost limbs are usually very heavily medicated, um, and they get you know, some really strong stuff, Vicodin and so on, Percocet. Um, they quickly become addicted to that. They're very addictive drugs, and because they're you know, their medicine, their medications are given to them for free by the VA, um, it's like a candy store. And often they'll find themselves going back over and over to get more of these drugs. Um, and I've seen a number of, of guys that I, one Marine in particular I, I, I'm quite close to, uh, have struggling with that. Um, substance abuse is, is a tough one. Um, these guys come, again, when they leave the war, they're no longer with their buddies. The unit breaks up. When you get back to Pendleton or Quantico, wherever it might be, the unit breaks up, and suddenly you're at a loss. You don't know what to do. Plus, you don't have anyone saying you need to get up at 5 a.m., breakfast is at 5.15, first exercise is at 6, and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's no structure to life anymore when you, when you leave the military. So a lot of these guys flounder because they, they, they no longer have their surrogate family. And they come home, some of them have, you know, a lot of them go through divorce you know, because their, their, their wife has left them, and so then they're completely on their own. 
Um, this is a this is a, an issue that you know affects not just Americans, but I, I, I report a bit on it in the United States. Um, that is is going to be with us for a long time, and because of the improvement in our medical capabilities, we have a lot more injured veterans today than previous wars when people died, um, and this is going to go on. And you know, the United States. Americans, as you, as you know, want to really draw the line under Afghanistan and Iraq. They want gone, they want finished, they want to hear about it, out of there. Well, I'm sorry, you have a body of veterans who are going to be living for the next 40 years with both physical and mental injuries, which we're going to have to deal with because uh, these guys, a lot of them are in trouble. 